the uh, sense of urgency that uh, was imparted a little bit, shared with us a little bit during the revival. Um, something that uh, I was meditating about a little bit. And uh, it occurred to me that Timothy, Paul's second letter to Timothy, was an example of a sense of urgency that certainly uh, we could do well to, to look at. <clears throat> and as I was looking at it, I was reminded of how similar it is to Peter, both first and second Peter, in tenor and tone and the magnitude of urgency. <clears throat> so I thought I would go through a little bit second Timothy. Um, let me see exactly which parts. Uh, 3 verse 1 through 4 verse 8 in Second Timothy. 4 to 8, Paul. <clears throat> Pardon? 4 to 8. Uh, 3 verse 1 through 4, ch chapter 4 verse 8. And at some point... <laughs> well, uh, one at a time. I can't have anything to write down with. I can only, okay, we'll start with first. I wasn't going to go there. At some point, we'll look at Peter. Okay. When you call it out, I'll switch it. <laughs> okay, three verse one. This one. Uh, there you go. And, uh, See how this see how this works exactly. Um, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth? Now as Jannies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest to all men, as theirs also was. Thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and seduce, seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. All right, this is, this is the key text. The setup here is the times he's describing very similar to the times we're just, we're living in. We have all these things before us. And he's setting up the case for urgency. <clears throat> and, he, and he goes to, you know who you receive these, who you receive this stuff from. It's me. It's me. You know, you know where I've been, you know what, what I've gone through. You know what kind of sufferings that I've been through. And that 
from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make those made thee wise and salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now, this is to Timothy, but it is to all of us also. All scripture, and this is this is this is a key commentary on the value of scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. Four verse one. I charge thee therefore before God. Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge and quicken the dead, is appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and court with all long suffering and doctrine. But the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I've finished my course, I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only me, not only to me, but to all them that love is appearing. This is the most positive statement that I'm aware of in Scripture. This is, he's not talking here of the hope of, you know, having run the race to the end, the hope of hope of his salvation. At this point he's talking affirmatively about his end. He knows he's about to be executed. A charge of urgency. What should we do in light of the urgency before us? Do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry. An evangelist is not is not, the work of evangelist is not solely isolated to hook that to him who is called to the office of evangelist. The work of evangelist is done by everybody who ever shares with anybody else what the Lord's done to them, done for them. The work of evangelist is done by everybody. It's not quite as specialized as an apostle. A pastor can do it, a teacher can do it, everybody can do it. Um, Timothy, I believe, is um, Paul's choice to succeed him in apostleship. But he also tells him in all, all, the, all the things that he's instructed in. He tells them to be sure, watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. The time is short, it was shortened especially here for Paul. How short is it? Well, it's almost 2,000 years shorter. And the sense of urgency is ever more of a force. It may be even shorter for some others of us. Um, and for the moment, I want to...